Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, was Natalie Wood murdered? Police now believe that she was the victim of an assault and that this was foul play. Decades after his wife's death, Robert Wagner maintains his innocence. Why do you think he's not talking to the police? He has something to hide. Shocking accusations from Natalie's own sister. Are you suggesting that he knocked her out and threw her in the water? Something like that, absolutely. And what did the boat's captain witness? They were fighting. You could hear things being thrown around the stateroom. Wagner is telling us we have to get our story straight. I said, we need to call for help. He said, no, we're not going to do that. You believe Robert Wagner murdered Natalie Wood? Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Today, we are talking about two glamorous celebrities, a mega yacht and possibly murder, the tragic drowning of actress Natalie Wood. This remains one of Hollywood's most disturbing mysteries. It was initially ruled an accidental death. Then, in 2011, investigators reopened the case and ruled Natalie's death suspicious. They also named her husband, Hollywood heartthrob Robert Wagner, as a person of interest. Now, did a night of heavy drinking cause the star to stumble off the yacht's deck and drown wearing only her nightgown, thick socks, and a down jacket? Or did something more sinister happen that night? Today, we're speaking with Natalie's sister and someone who was there the night the brown-eyed beauty died. Now, at the time of her death, Natalie was already a Hollywood legend. As a child star, she won over audiences in the beloved Christmas movie, Miracle on 34th Street. She later became just as well known for her starring roles in West Side Story and Rebel Without a Cause as she did for her epic romances and her glamorous yet troubled life in the spotlight. Now, Natalie met and fell in love with Robert Wagner when she was just 18 years old. And together, they graced the covers of magazines and dazzled on the red carpet. Take a look. Fans have seen Natalie grow from a child star to one of the world's biggest box office attractions. She was so gifted. She was a very, very fine actress. And people loved her, you know, they adored her. Natalie, she's been to many of these events, being nominated in 1961 as Best Actress in Splendor in the Grass. Despite looking like a fairy tale couple, Natalie and Robert had a tumultuous relationship. And on November 29th, 1981, they spent their final night together. What became Natalie's fatal voyage started out as a glamorous adventure. A yacht named Splendor sailed to Catalina Island carrying three of the world's biggest stars, Natalie Wood, Robert Wagner, and actor Christopher Walken. Only Natalie did not come back alive. Actress Natalie Wood is dead at 43. Natalie Wood apparently slipped, hit her head, and drowned. The coroner's office said today that actress Natalie Wood was intoxicated and angry after an argument between her husband and actor Christopher Walken when she stormed off a yacht this weekend and apparently fell into the sea. On the resort island of Catalina itself, investigators questioned those involved in the frantic late-night search. After a long evening of partying, Miss Wood apparently left the salon of the family yacht alone. She attempted to board this rubber dinghy. It was here that she fell and drowned. Wagner had often said she was a poor swimmer. A tragic accident. That's the finding of Los Angeles coroner Thomas Noguchi in the death of actress Natalie Wood. Her husband, actor Robert Wagner, remains in seclusion at their home today. Coroner Noguchi said it was a combination of circumstances. What caused her to come out on deck in the middle of the night? Argument apparently took place. 
not involving Miss Wagner, but Mr. Wagner and uh, other actor. The other actor was Christopher Walken. Noguchi speculated Miss Wood had listened to it long enough. He also said she hit her head on the side of the vessel when she fell. The report said there was no evidence of foul play in the 43-year-old actress's death. Natalie Wood was buried Wednesday in a quiet ceremony. The services were attended by close friends in the Hollywood community. Frank Sinatra, Sir Lawrence Olivier, Rock Hudson, Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire, Gregory Peck. At the last moment, Robert Wagner bent to kiss the casket in farewell. Well, earlier this year, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department claimed that since the case was reopened, more than 100 people had come forward with new information, including new witnesses who claimed they heard screams and fighting coming from the yacht the night she died. The death of an actress, Natalie Wood, is still one of Hollywood's greatest unsolved mystery. For years, the case closed. Cops believing Wood goes overboard by accident during a private cruise. The LA coroner's office is expected to release a new report today, saying the original autopsy could be wrong and Wood may not have died in an accident. The medical examiner changed the manner of Wood's death from accidental to undetermined. Why are all these bruises suspicious to you? Because she looked like the victim of an assault. There were only four people on board. Three of those remain alive. Two of those are talking to police. One is refusing to answer questions, and that is Robert Wagner. Police have reopened the case after the boat's captain changed his story three decades on. Captain Dennis Deverne claimed the couple had a terrible fight before she disappeared. I believe that Robert Wagner was with her up until the moment she went into the water. The Los Angeles Sheriff's Department says two new witnesses recall yelling, arguing, and crashing sounds from the stateroom on a boat where Wood was last seen alive. And what they say doesn't square with the version told by her then-husband, Robert Wagner. We'd love to hear his side of his version of events. The uh, version of events he's, he's put up trade in the media really don't add up to what we found. Make no mistake, this investigation was mishandled. This would be 101 in how not to handle a death case. It has been nearly 37 years since the body of Natalie Wood was found in the water off Catalina Island. And after all these years and countless hours of investigation, some of the most basic questions have still not been answered, including one of the most important questions of all. Was Natalie Wood murdered? Well, coming up, Robert Wagner maintains his wife was simply the victim of a tragic accident. But Natalie's sister, Lana, says it's time for him to tell the truth once and for all. Plus, the shocking moment Lana confronted Robert Wagner demanding answers. That's next. <laughs> Jay, you've, you've changed your story. I haven't changed never... anything. One time, RJ suggested that she left to go to a party in a nightgown with a pair of woolen socks. And his direct quote was, she was that type of woman who enjoyed partying in her nightgown. And later, why did you confront him like that? He shoved her, and he saw her go in the water. Why didn't he go in? What was the state of the marriage at that time? Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. Why is this former cheerleader... When I'm mad, I look so uncontrolled. ...taking out her anger... She's giving me black eyes. He's done the exact same stuff to me. ...on her fiancé. You broke the plate, and then you storm off. Ah! You got scratches on your neck, you got scratches on your back. I don't care. What I care is that you guys are getting physical. That's dangerous. All new season of Dr. Phil. That's Monday. Robert Wagner has always denied that he had anything to do with his wife Natalie Wood's death. Now today, her sister Lana is here. She has vowed to never stop fighting for justice for Natalie and is coming forward demanding that Robert tell the truth once and for all. When Natalie first met Robert, I was so young. I was nine years old. I just remember uh, 
a tall guy walking down our hallway. When Natalie and RJ were married, the wedding upset me greatly. I started crying hysterically. Natalie ran to me and said, why are you crying? And I said, because I'm gonna lose you. And I guess I was right. I think the investigation was mishandled from the beginning. Things were oversimplified and ignored. Conspiracy is, is a, a bit far-fetched, but were things covered up and overlooked purposefully? I'm certain they were. I don't believe the official story because, first of all, it was changed by RJ. Natalie would not go out and attempt to tie up a dinghy. She would not attempt to get in the dinghy by herself wearing a nightgown and woolen socks. I was stunned that RJ would say something like that. I know that Natalie and RJ were fighting because the night before she had not even stayed on the Splendor. RJ denied the broken wine bottle and then later on he said he did break a wine bottle and he was very angry and very jealous. They began to fight. She ended up in the water. The only words exchanged between RJ and myself was after Natalie's funeral. I said, RJ, tell me what the hell happened. And he said, it was an accident. You've got to believe me. I absolutely believe that RJ is withholding information. I've hoped that he would man up, but it um, doesn't look like it's going to happen. What do you think happened to Natalie that night? Uh, they were having a very rough time with uh, their marriage. And um, my assumption is, knowing Natalie and knowing her temperament, is she may have verbally pushed RJ too much. I, there's no doubt in my mind that he wasn't responsible for having her in the water. Are, are you suggesting that he, he knocked her out in some way and threw her in the water? Or are you thinking, what, what, what is it you're... It, it is something like that, absolutely. The first thing that was said by various people was, oh, well, um, it was the dinghy banging up against the side of the boat that troubled her. So she got up to tie it up. First of all, did you happen to notice where the dinghy is tied up mm -hmm. when you just saw that? It wasn't at the back. Mm -hmm. Secondly, she would never do that. That's why she had Dennis. That's why they had hired a captain who was their regular, full-time captain. She would not do any of that. Um, one time, RJ suggested that she left to go to a party in a nightgown with a pair of woolen socks. And his direct quote was, she was that type of woman who enjoyed partying in her nightgown. None of it makes any sense. Uh, w when you look at the sequence of events here, um, there were people on that boat, and one of them is not talking to the police, and that's Robert Wagner. Why do you think he's not talking to the police? Why wouldn't you say, ask me anything? He's spoken to no one. He has something to hide. Mm -hmm. I find it shocking. That's, to me, not a grieving husband. I am drowning in sadness. And later, the L.A. County Sheriff's Department believe this was foul play. So what injuries did she have when she was found? Well, I can tell you exclusively. There were people on that boat, and one of them is not talking to the police, and that's Robert Wagner. Why do you think he's not talking to the police? The only reason can be that he has something to hide. Otherwise, why wouldn't you talk to the police? Why wouldn't you say, ask me anything, of course. Why wouldn't you go into detail? Why wouldn't you do it? Well, now, Lana actually confronted Robert Wagner, yes. demanding answers. Let's take a look. RJ, I just wanted to ask you one thing. I'm really sorry. I know the pain that you're going through and that I'm going through. You know, I know this has not been any easier for you. I know that. But everybody is going to drive me absolutely insane. I beg your pardon? Until you? everybody knows. You know, why won't you speak to the detectives? They're super guys. 
clear well, yourself you, if you if, can. Why would you even bring up anything like that? Because I'm hounded with done? it every single day. Do you realize what you've done? No, what have I done? Do you, do you know we have a family? Do you know yes. Do you have a family? Yes, I know. I'm not a part of it, thank you. But yes, we have a family. I'm amazed that you'd even talk to me. Why wouldn't I talk to you? I've known you since you were, since I was a child. No, I've known you since you were a child. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, can they go him? away? I don't know. The, yeah. Young man. Anyway. Uh, it, I, I have talked to everybody. What, what do you, you I don't know. Kevin and of, Ralph, you, you, I don't you, you, accuse you, you of anything. You accuse me of murdering her of taking all these positions, it's incredible. I can't believe that you'd do something like that. I just can't believe it. But RJ, you've, you've changed your story. I haven't changed You've anything. never said anything to me. I you have never, never changed anything. You never for one minute stopped and said, this is what happened. I know it's gonna hurt I me. No, to me, I, of course not I've, to me, of you course didn't. I have stopped and said what happened. No, RJ, you there really did. Every everybody you was really on top didn't. of that. Look at all these people around. Oh, all Jesus Christ! No. Oh, I, think, I can't believe it. Why did you confront him like that, and when was that? Uh, that was in Palm Springs, and that was about, I want to say, a year and a half ago. Uh huh. Two years ago. And what was your goal in confronting him in that way? Hoping that he would say something. Hoping mm -hmm. that if he, if I were able to speak with him face to face, that he would be the RJ that I thought I knew. Well, you heard him say that he had talked to everybody. <laughs> yes. True. I wonder who those people are. He's spoken to no one. This was the second time they had been married, yes. and you said the state of the marriage. What was the state of the marriage at that time? Well, Natalie was trying to reestablish herself. Don't forget that this is something. Natalie's career, Natalie's life as an actress was all she ever knew. What she wanted desperately was a family, but she had to be an actress. She was trying to reestablish her career. She was trying to find things. We would sit and look through books. We would talk about various things that perhaps she could produce and be in. Um, she wanted to get back out there. And mm -hmm. I think that may have been threatening. I don't know. So what was your relationship like with her? If he had been abusive with her in any way, would she have confided that to you? No. We were the kind of family that didn't talk about those things. Okay, I want you to do one thing for me. I, I, we had a little clip of, of him talking to Larry King. Yes. And being asked a question. I want you to take a look at that and, and tell me what your response to it is. How did you emotionally story? deal with that tragedy that night? Oh. Drowning. Oh my God, Larry. I, I, I mean, I was in I was in shock, you know. I mean, total shock. I, I, I the, what really, really saved me were my children. Do you know? I think if I'd have been alone and didn't have that responsibility to my daughters and my family, I don't think I would have made it. And Wasn't it doubly tough that not only had you lost her, but then the tabloids? are making hay of how did you lose it, what happened, mm. was there murder involved, was it, mm. how did you deal with all, it's one thing to have a loss, but know, then it's a loss that's a public loss, and then it's a loss with rumors. You know what happened uh, for me, Larry? I, I was involved and I had a very, very dear friend that was very close to both Natalie and myself, whose name was Paul Ziffrin, and he was our advisor and our lawyer. He came to my house, and he sat there and he said, I'm not going to leave here until you promise me one thing. And I said, what is that? He said that you will not read these things and that you will not answer them. And so I said, all right. And I think but it's safe. you had me. to gut it out. Once you make that decision, yeah. no comment is what? Oh, yeah. So I just, uh, I never, you know, I mean, it's all, you know, it's all conjecture. And you know, the thing is, Larry, it's not what if, it's what is. 
You know, she was gone. Like that. In an instant. Our lives changed. Amazing. It's all about him, isn't it? I'm, I find it shocking. That's, to me, not a grieving husband. You know, if, if she accidentally, if they were angry and he shoved her or she slipped or something and he saw her go in the water, why didn't he go in? But this is a response? That, it, you know, it's heartbreaking to me. Somebody asked me, was I angry? I'm not but I am drowning in sadness. Well, we're gonna take a break, and coming up, do critical pieces of new evidence prove the superstar's tragic death was no accident? Well, one man says they do, and we're gonna meet him when we come back. We have uncovered startling new details about what took place minute by minute on board that boat. Plus, we've also uncovered chilling interviews with people that have never before spoken about the case. And later... They have new questions. Lana has questions. Hollywood has questions. Someone shouldn't die without knowing what happened to them. Thirty-six years ago, one of Hollywood's most beloved actresses fell over the side of a yacht named Splendor and drowned. Now, for three decades, people have questioned what really happened. Did she fall? Was she pushed? Was she conscious when she went over the side, or had she already lost consciousness? Was this an accident like her famous Hollywood husband claims, or was she murdered? Now, Dylan Howard, host of the podcast Fatal Voyage, the mysterious death of Natalie Wood, says he has uncovered proof that Natalie's death was no accident. This is Hollywood's most enduring mystery. This case remains very much active. It's been reopened by homicide detectives, and I think that's what makes it so tantalizing and interesting to the public. People want answers. We still don't know what happened that night on the boat. We know that on that fateful night, there was a violent confrontation. But what actually took place that led Natalie to leave the boat, willingly or unwillingly? We have spent years investigating this case. We uncovered her never-before-published memoir. We have unearthed critical pieces of evidence that were overlooked at the time. And this all paints a very disturbing portrait about the initial police investigation into Natalie Wood's death. Well, Dylan, thank you for being here, Pleasure number here. one. And uh, number two, uh, I, I want to say to people at home, this is a podcast you want to listen to. And set some time aside because you will just keep clicking forward and clicking forward and clicking forward so job well done on this it. now share some things with us you say and the police say that robert's story has changed so what details ha have changed that are significant here well initially he said that there was no confrontation however in his own book he has since admitted that a wine bottle was broken on that night in the parlor in the parlor on board the Splendor. Mm -hmm. And in the parlor at that time were Christopher Walken, Natalie, and Robert Wagner. Correct. Right. And also on board was Dennis Deverne, yeah. who the boat skipper. And he could hear it. He could hear it. And we talk about this as a mega yacht, but this was a 55-foot mm -hmm. boat, right? And this stage is about 57 feet across. So as, as we look at the boat, there's nowhere to hide here. I mean, you can hear what's going on, so the captain could certainly hear. Absolutely, and this is critical. The police actually went to Hawaii, where the Splendor is now, and they took Dennis, and they conducted noise tests to prove that what he was telling them was true, what he heard on that night. And Dennis's own version of events is chilling, and he will actually come on shortly and explain some new details that are startling about what he said to Robert Wagner immediately after he said to uh, him that Natalie was missing. All right, well, there was actually, that boat is now located in Hawaii. Yeah. 
and we have a tour here. Uh, this is the new owner giving a tour of the interior of the boat where Natalie was last seen alive. So, so you get a feel of where we're talking about. Let's take a quick look at this. Welcome to Splendor. I've tried to keep this the same as it was when I purchased it. This is the main salon. This is where the argument would have started once they got back on the boat. Now, she would have gone to her room, closed the door. But the boat's walls are so thin, you can hear anything going on. Christopher Walken would have gone forward to one of the staterooms forward, and the captain went up here to the wheelhouse. Now, Robert Wagner would have gone down to Natalie's room and closed the door. So they were private down there. This was Natalie's stateroom. And so this is where she would have come to that fateful night. And this door right here is the, where she would have gone to to go out to the swim step where the dinghy was tied. This is the door that she would have had to go out of to get to the dive step, which is right here. And the dinghy, supposedly, was tied up here. And you can see when you were getting on the boat that it's a high boat. It's well above the water line, so she couldn't have gotten into the dinghy anywhere except off this dive step. That dive step's critical. Right. That's where Dennis Deverne says that Robert Wagner said to him, Natalie's gone. Standing on the dive step. On the dive step. Right. Now, what's important about Dennis's account is that the LA County Sheriff's Department have unearthed two new witnesses that corroborate his version of events. They are two new witnesses who are on boats near the Splendor on that night and overheard arguments. Dennis passed a lie detector test administered to him by the police. Right. And these people heard the yelling or did they hear specific words? They heard the yelling. Okay. Police have not revealed the identity of these two witnesses. Mm -hmm. But also consider this, Phil. Um, Natalie Wood had a morbid fear of water. We know that because we unearthed her never before seen memoir. And in that, she talks about her childhood. And Lana, you can speak to that. Yes. She morbidly feared water. It... Would she go into the water on a dinghy of her own volition? At night. It... At night. In the dark. It, it in isn't the dark. that she in the was water a poor cold. swimmer. She didn't know how to swim. Police now believe that she was the victim of an assault and that she went into the water unconscious. Are they actively investigating to determine whether or not he was active in her death? You're saying Natalie, who doesn't swim and has a fear of water, supposedly was going to get in this dinghy and wear her flannel nightgown to a party on shore. Makes perfect sense, doesn't well, it? I mean, <laughs> this water off Catalina is never smooth. Mm -mm. It's always rough, it's cold, mm -hmm. and it's dark yeah. at night. This, I wouldn't go in that water. Mm -mm. Now, there's a reason, there's a specific reason that she's afraid of water. Yes. Tell us about that. Um, my mother, uh, her family had left Russia and gone into China. My mother was raised in China, schooled there, and married there. She said to Natalie and me many, many times when we were both very young that a gypsy had told her fortune and told her that she would have a child that would be known all over the world and that someone was going to die from drowning. And so she had told that to you? Constantly. My mother would never learn to swim either because she didn't know who was going to drown. Wow. Okay, so in, Dylan, in 2012, the Los Angeles coroner's office amended uh, Natalie's death certificate mm -hmm. from accidental drowning to drowning and other undetermined factors. Why? Those undetermined factors, police now believe that she was the victim of an assault prior to going into the water and that she went into the water unconscious. That's not my words. That's the words at the LA County Sheriff's Department on the record. They believe this was foul play. Mm -hmm. 
And when asked why they were saying that, the police said, and I quote, she looked like the victim of an assault. So what injuries did she have when she was found? She had bruises. Was bruises. And originally it was explained away by the then coroner, Thomas Noguchi, that she must have got these bruises because she was trying to get into the dinghy, the valley, and it was called, uh, to escape the boat. But these bruises were around her neck. That's not the type of bruise you would get trying to get into a dinghy if you have a morbid fear of water. Now, one of the things that they do with pathology and autopsies is they look at the different planes that injuries occur in. Like if you, you know, fall one way or another, does the injury come in that plane? Does it come up and down? Is it vertical? Uh, is it horizontal? Uh, so it's not just a matter of can you get banged up, but they can determine where you would be banged up. And if you fall getting in a dinghy, having bruises around your neck, it's just not consistent with the impact you would have. And that was their conclusion. Correct. Right? Abrasions riddled all across her body. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, uh, when, when you say that Robert Wagner is now a person of interest, are they actively investigating what he did, what he said? Are they, in, are they pursuing him to determine whether or not he was active in her death? Well, I can tell you exclusively that they have attempted no less than eight times to speak to Robert Wagner. They have flown to Aspen where he lives with his now actress wife, Jill St. John, and he's refused every overture to speak to police. But police have spoken to two other people that were on board that night. Dennis Deverne, the boat captain, put him through a lie detector test, and they've also spoken to Christopher Walken. And I can tell you that my sources within, within the LA County Sheriff's Department tell me that Christopher Walken has corroborated Dennis's version of events. And that's critical. Mm -hmm. And you say eight times since the case has been reopened? Since the case has been reopened. He's refusing to talk to them. Now, people close to him tell me that he doesn't have a very good memory of what happened that night. He's aging and that his recollection of events isn't strong enough to speak to police, and that he's also answered all their questions. But they have new questions. Lana has questions. Dennis Deverne, who's carried this for four decades, has questions. Hollywood has questions. Someone shouldn't die without knowing what happened to them. You talked to him. And yes. He seemed lucid during that conversation. Absolutely. I don't know what his state is now, but he was certainly able to answer questions to you. Absolutely. And well, tell you what the he thing is, um, in cases like that, because I, I took care of my mother when she became when she had dementia and then went into full blown Alzheimer's. She stayed at home with me, and I cared for her. And even if they can't remember what they've just said or who you are, it's shocking as to how well they can remember the past. Well, I can tell you in memory, there are what are called hold and no hold functions mm -hmm. uh, across changes in the brain. And sometimes we can remember our fifth grade address, mm -hmm. but we can't remember who we had lunch with yesterday. Exactly. And it's the difference between long and short term memory yeah. and hold and no hold functions. Mm -hmm. And so there's certainly the chance that memories are intact, relevant to what we're talking about here. In Robert Wagner's own memoir, he talks about his jealousy about Natalie dating uh, Warren Beatty. And he even admits that he turned up to Warren Beatty's house with a loaded gun. Dylan Howard has put together a, a podcast that's called Fatal Voids, The Mysterious Death of Natalie Wood. And I've said... You don't want to let the sun set before you start listening to this because it is intriguing and will make you start thinking about this. And when you dug into this, you, you got into some memoirs of Natalie's that mm -hmm. had never been uh, disclosed before. And tell us about those. How, how did you come to these and what's I the significance? I got them a few years ago uh -huh. um, and I've obviously been researching and investigating this case for some time. I think the most illuminating thing about these memoirs is that it helps piece together a timeline of Natalie's life. 
And it's easy to sit here and talk about that fateful night in 1981, but she led a really difficult life. She was a child star from a very young age. She was brutally raped at the Chateau Marmont. She uh, endured some really tough times, Lana. Yes. And this memoir talks about that. It talks about the men in her life that she dated. She talks about her relationship with Warren Beatty. You know, here's an anecdote, Dr. Phil. In Robert Wagner's own memoir, he talks about his jealousy about Natalie dating uh, Warren Beatty. And he even admits in his own words that he turned up to Warren Beatty's house with a loaded gun. Hmm. Well, one of the excerpts you shared with us, it, uh, I'll read the quote from the memoirs. Looking at it from the outside, we must have seemed like the American dream. We were both attractive and successful, so what could possibly be wrong. Uh, so she was aware that this looked like, I mean, the Hollywood glamour couple, right? Yes. Uh, but behind the scenes, it was very different. She also states, I wanted to discuss our problems with RJ, but where do you begin? And what can you say when everything on the surface looks so right? So she was kind of trapped in her own dream. Yes. For the first time, I considered in horror the possibility that I might join the sad parade of famous movie ladies who would end up lonely after many divorces, clinging to yellowed scrapbooks and memories of faded romances. So she did feel that this could slip away. Absolutely. She was very, very concerned that it would slip away. She was concerned that there would be no roles for her when she got older but she was actively trying to find some. She was trying to do something about it. She was trying to find things she could produce that she could be in, in touch with and be in. Um, also, as far as the memoirs go, I was phoned by a lady who lived in a trailer, and she said that she was a nurse working in her doctor's office, and she found these in the waiting room but they were st stuck into a bunch of magazines. When the doctor retired, she said, what are you going to do with all this? And he wow. said, I don't care. She loaded them up and they sat in her garage for 10 years. And then her husband said, get rid of them. And she started going through them and she found them. And she contacted me oh, wow. and she contacted RJ. And uh, I drove out to her place and looked at them and looked at Natalie's handwriting and said, yes, they're hers. And she gave me a copy. All right, coming up, what happened during Natalie's final hours? Now, one man says he does have the answers because he was there and he is answering questions. He is talking. Tomorrow, he was one of the last people to see actress Natalie Wood alive before she drowned in the dead of the night in the Pacific Ocean. Could secrets that the captain of the boat kept for years provide clues as to what happened in Natalie's final hours? What does he believe happened that fateful night? Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, the boat's captain speaks out. They were fighting. You could hear things being thrown around the stateroom. What were they arguing about? He was being extremely jealous. He picked up a bottle of wine. He smashed it on that table. Glass went all over. Natalie Wood's death. Robert Wagner standing at the back of the boat. And he looked at me and he said, Natalie's missing. Was it an accident? Robert Wagner has denied that he had anything to do with his wife's death. Shocking new allegations. I said, we need to call for help. He said, no, we're not going to do that. So you, Christopher Walken, and Robert Wagner, he's saying the three of you have to get your story straight. Correct. And what was the story that you got straight? She slipped and fell into the water and drowned. You believe Robert Wagner murdered Natalie Wood? I really do. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow in part two of our show about the mysterious case of Natalie Wood. You do not want to miss it. Thanks for watching today.